All right. So to sum up, to review where the players are in this group, thank you for everyone who's pouring in with the stars right now. Big appreciation for you. Uh, this is a very important step for both players, but in particular, ACCM. Good news for him is that he has this set and then one more, and that is going to be two sets happening within uh, 24 hours of each other or 48 hours of each other. The bad news for ACCM is he only has five wins in this group. He has Nikov now, and then he has Tato next. Some massive names. So I was saying for ACCM to feel safe, because right now it looks like Bad Boy is going to be relegated, and we're just trying to see who else is going to join him. I think getting one or two wins in both of those sets, and he's going to be completely fine. Nikov, this is his final round. Nikov, he's played very good. He's at eight wins. Most likely he's going to be safe. But in the event he were to get 3 0 here, and then ACCM and other players get lots of wins, you never know. So uh, we'll... Still have to see what happens with him as things go on with the other sets. Nikov has gone for the poles. And man, I'm so happy to see the poles picked again here on this map. We don't see a lot of gold rush, but I feel like when we do, it's always Aztecs, Mayans. And uh, we've seen this, a, a bit more of diversity for this map. Berbers, Byzantines, Poles. Uh, I think we saw Hindustanis uh, at one point, so... Happy to see the pick there from Nikov. Mayans have been picked here for years. Also, I'm just going to refresh the chat because it's blue and I know it's hard for people to see later. Uh, boom. Very important stuff there. Perfect. Yeah, I've been loving the game so far. It is interesting that ACCM came forward so early. He was definitely considering a bit of a lame, but he's going to have to go home and think twice about that. For ACCM, I would say the, the thing that he tends to struggle with is if he... And I guess this could be the same for a lot of players. But ACCM tends to struggle if that meta doesn't work out. I think when the games get messy, certain players thrive. And I wouldn't say ACCM is necessarily one of them. He did try and make it messy. And he took a risk. He didn't bring in his goats, which we'll see two here. And there's probably going to be more over here for him. But... He doesn't have any reward for that lame so far as Nikov comes forward. And Nikov gets hit by the eagle. My prediction here. Again, no one's seen this series. Um, I'm going to go... Shoot, does anyone remember what the maps were? I think Fortified Clearing was one of them. I'm going to go 2-1 Nikov. Nikov has looked really good. He 2-1's Tato. He did lose 2-1 to MBL, but even still, I felt like in that series, he could have gone 2-1 up. Nikov's been playing some of his best Age of Empires, and it's not to say ACCM is not, but I think I'll go 2-1 Nikov. I think ACCM is going to be desperate enough for wins. He's going to be prepared. There's never really a question over his preparation these days, so I can see him with his home map possibly getting an edge over Nikov. Uh, gold position is always important. We do have three tiles of gold here. And then we have four tiles of gold here for ACCM. Uh, the wall potential is there to wall in all of his golds if he wishes to. He actually has not pushed in his ostrich or his zebra, so that kind of hurts. And then for Nikov, he's already walling up. And he's going to get loom, so I think Nikov might click up to the next stage. And wow, he wants to go for a full wall. The nice thing about the poles is on a map where most of the gold is towards the center... You are getting additional gold before going to the middle because you received gold from Mining Stone, which is pretty sick. I just don't know what Nikov's strategy is here because usually players are not going to go for scouts. Actually, saying that, we have seen scouts on this map before. But when you're up against the Mayans, you're normally expecting the Mayans are going to wall up. This, to me, so far looks like a fast castle play for ACCM as he comes forward. I'm still sad that players aren't going for wolf rushes. Wouldn't it be more worth it to make one militia round up all the lions and then drop the lions off at your opponent's base? I think Yo did it in his one game against Barls. And that was amazing. He did it with a spearman, I think. But it's certainly going to be more effective, right? I guess you could attack the house, though, with this. And you can't really command the lions to attack houses. Nikov goes up very quickly, and he will get his walls down before the Drush arrives. And I think Nikov is simply going to play into farms here. 
behind this, we will see the click to Feudalage. No, we won't see the click to Feudalage for ACCM. He might be a little bit concerned when he sees Nikov is in Feudalage, but he hasn't taken any damage here. I don't know. I don't see Nikov with a Barracks yet. I think Nikov is just going to go for Eco Upgrades and place those farms around the full works. It's kind of the pull strategy that you can't go wrong with here. ACCM, just like many outside the top eight, feels like he just has different levels, but has a higher max level than Nikov. Really? I don't know. I think Nikov's max level is higher than ACCM's. But I think you could argue that ACCM is maybe a little bit more consistent. But, again, the guys are so close. Like, if I had to make a ranking, or a world ranking with these players, there might only be, like, two spots or three spots between where I put them. These villagers are going to leave now. This is interesting. So I think he realizes that Nikov's not going to go aggressive. And so he's just going to go out here and take this food now. But this is not going to be a fast castle for ACCM. Not having his deer early. Just now seeding farms means that he's going to be stuck in Feudal Age for a bit. With the poles, you get 10% of your farm's food when you place it around a full work. Nikov is completely walled up. Would have preferred to see ACCM just continue to attack the houses. I feel like that has more effect than going against Palisades. Nikov's just playing super safe. They're both attacking houses. And Nikov's food income should start spiking from this. 10% of your farm's food instantly is huge. And it, it's a something that's better to do in Feudal Age. Because after Horse Collar, you get more food on your farm. So it's essentially just a boom build. But he went fast feudal for it. And he's now going to add a barracks as well. Interesting decision. Is also on stone. And so that brings him enough gold to maybe make an archer or two, which might be his plan. Nikov doesn't have this scouted. If he had this scouted, he might have done something, but still only has his scout. There's the range for ACCM. There's the blacksmith. Food count's looking pretty similar for both players right now, though. Oh, 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 there's no villagers around the TC. Oh my god, that's so amazing. I love that. Any other civilization, you couldn't do this. But ACCM's like, see ya. <laughs> oh, that, I would be so annoyed if I'm Nikov. Now, Nikov has to fight this back. And Polish villagers do heal, so he might end up being fine. But the fact that ACCM can actually harass now is pretty cool. And Nikov's actually going for a stable, by the way. So he's added a Spearman just to have something else that attacks. And ACCM going for the kill. And Nikov with the beautiful quick wall there. And again, the villager will heal up because it's a Polish villager. You do have to keep him in there for a while, though. And you have to pay attention to her. Oh, ACCM would love a villager kill here. He's not going to get it, though. The scout for Nikov has come home. Uh, don't lose your scout, Nikov. There you go. And in the end, I think the villager can go back to work. This villager can go back to work. I still love that ACCM did that. But it's just not going to kill anything in the end. All right, so ACCM clicks up. He's making archers. Nikov has quite a bit of stone, quite a bit of food. Gold count's getting there as well. He actually used the market. Because there is a concern. When you're going knights, you do not want to have 10 or 12 crossbows on you before you get the upgrades and the numbers. That's why crossbowmen's so dominant. Not only is it a very cheap upgrade, but you can start to make them in the feudal age. You cannot do that with something like knights. <laughs> Poles are annoying. Well, you know, Nikov, he talked about it with me a couple weeks ago. He basically said that all the civilizations he thinks are busted, he's been winning with. Also, this, uh, there's a, I don't know if he's Argentinian, but there's a Spanish content creator. Nice guy. I think his name's like Pinch Terror or something like that. Uh, he tweeted out Nikov's results with Burgundians. And Nikov has won like, as he loses his scout there, I think he's won like 15 of the last 18 games he's played with Burgundians in tournaments, which is a ridiculous stat. And Nikov responded to him on Twitter. It was like, no, don't post this yet. Now everyone's going to ban it against me. But Nikov's also been very outspoken about the Burgundians. He's like, this is too OP. The Civ needs to be nerfed. And it's like every time he's complaining about a Civ, He's, he's showing people why it's strong. <laughs> so, don't tell me. Don't. No way. No way. Not, not with archers now. Uh. Oh, my God. ACCM. 
I guess if it's just one archer, it won't be the biggest deal, but he does it again. He does have fletching as well, so I mean, he could definitely end up getting some kills here. We're just going to see a scout from Nikov in the end to deal with it, though. I like how sneaky ACCM has been. But also, the sneakiness could have a negative impact on you because you really do need to have that archer mass in the middle. Nikov deals with it just like he did before. He's Spanish, I think. Yeah, uh, he's a nice guy. He's a nice guy. He's always shown a lot of uh, appreciation for me and what I do. And I, uh, I cannot speak a lot of Spanish, but I will occasionally tune in. Siege Workshop for Nikov. That shows me he's really concerned about this, and he might need to be concerned about this because he doesn't have, he doesn't have many knights yet. That crossbow mass frightening him to the point where he goes for siege instead of at second town center. This is the thing about the poles. Yes, you want to make use of your eco bonus, and you want to take stone instead of taking gold, but how can you really use that stone just yet? There's the TC for ACCM. Bengali seem weak. Your jars are too strong and poles are just right. Um, I I still think that the unique tech for poles should be tweaked a little bit, but they're in a pretty good spot. I wouldn't want to change poles too much. They're very fun to play. I think that's an important aspect, honestly. Their bonuses are very unique and they flow well together. I think instead of 60% off on the knights, I would maybe make it like 40% or something, but 45%. 49%, 60% feels a little too strong. I think if anything, the strongest thing about the poles is probably their economy, but their economy is also like so unique that I wouldn't want to change it for that reason. But to the game here, you know, Nikov has had a rough time getting his eco rolling. Uh, a bit late with some of the eco upgrades you'd want to prioritize with the poles. And ACCM is going to place a very interesting town center. You know, the whole point of our version of Gold Rush is that you don't need to take the middle hill. If you were to do the... I guess I think they have changed the default version of Gold Rush recently. But I feel like this is a bit of a risk in some ways. You could always just drop your TC here. Still have a lot of gold access. And then maybe eventually build a castle here. So I'm actually very surprised to see the middle TC. That does give you uh, a better position perhaps. But very rarely do you see players do that these days. Normally you see TC here. Nikov will probably TC over here. Scorpions for Nikov are purely in defense right now. As he will start to add more full works. And his eco is going to catch up here. He is behind in villagers. But the amount of food that he's going to bring in is going to be insane here. Also, I really like how ACCM is a bit worried about the siege or the knights. So he's got the monk here. If he were to actually convert a knight, he could use that knight to take out the scorpions that Nikov has. And a lot of players would go out and they would try and get this relic right now. But he's being more patient than that. He did build the perfect second town center if he wants a castle. Because he's been on stone for a bit. And so far so good for ACCM. And comes in here a bit more desperate for wins. And oh my god. Oh that could have been so much worse. That's why you have the monk though. You can heal that right back up. And that's why you have the siege. You can add the siege now. And take out that scorpion. For those scorpions, there goes an eagle. That will obviously go down. Nikov backs away and completes his town center on the gold. How do you feel about prioritizing the castle age farm upgrade over the wood with the poles? Um, I like it. I like it. I think because getting additional food right now is really important. I think in a normal boom scenario, you obviously want to prioritize wood. But you want that food spike so you can create the vills and get the knights and get the upgrades. So I like it. I think it is a uh, situation where it always depends. And oh boy, this could be rough for Nikov. He's trying to protect this with the castle. ACCM has the middle town centered. This could still go either way though. Beautiful scorpion micro there from Nikov. Scorpions are not easy to micro. And Nikov may be considering a dive with his knights, but he knows there's going to be monks out there. Damn, this is sick from him. This is so sick from him. Honestly, it feels like he's going to get it up. ACCM has to respect the Manganel. And I think ACCM will happily just build his own castle here, as that will be a big target for him to be able to trep Nikov down. Something that Nikov needs to keep a close eye on, though, is this gold. Like, this gold might end up being a really big deal. 
if he's forced off of this gold with any archers or castle from ACCM. So some players will just completely forget about this. And so I brought this up for a reason. I really think he's going to need that one. Because this is a lot more awkward for him. Whereas ACCM can, in theory, take all this gold in the back. Big shot there. Sorry, I looked away for a second. <gasps> and the monks, they will run away. And ACCM loses one. Probably lose a second as well. And wow, well played Nikov. But what do you do if you're Nikov? Do you spend all your resources to go in? Or do you spend all your resources to flood the map with army? Because that unique tech we talked about. 500 food. Like 300 gold. He's flirting with that. I don't know. I think he's going to try and go Imperial Age first though. Because he's not producing more knights. He doesn't even have full armor. And here he goes. Here he goes. ACCM is going to allow these knights into his base. And oh my god. How do you like it ACCM? How does it feel? How does it taste? You sent through militia and archers into Nikov's base, but Nikov's using your strategy to send knights into your base. God, that's so good. We've seen it from both players now, but obviously huge for Nikov here as he finally gets some eco damage in. He could lose all of his knights, and that could be seen as a negative, but behind this, he's on his way to the Imperial Age, and now you can start to think about getting that unique tech. But no, I always like the idea of going for the all-in with knights as well. I think you have to do one or the other. As long as you don't try and do a mix of both. If you were to have produced 15 more knights and then tried to go imp, then I would have seen it as a mistake. But okay. Uh, kills six villagers. Loses knights in the process. But the knights could actually run away here if you wanted to. Run. Leave. Okay. Maybe he doesn't think that's possible. Think of the idle time as well. The idle time shut up for a lot of those vills. The monks aren't getting relics. And there we have the Sriracha Privilege upgrade. Okay, so I have I have noticed, though, with these fast stims with poles, I know their knights are cheap, but their eco does feel very fragile. <laughs> like, or, or not their eco, but I guess it's just not free-flowing enough to go for, like, five or six stables, which is typically what you want to open with because he needs a treb. And it's taking some time. So there he's going to go three stables. He needs to get the final armor upgrade. And in some ways it's a negative, I guess, that poles don't get the Imperial Age armor. But honestly, it's kind of it's kind of refreshing. Because then you're like, oh, I have imp upgrades already. <laughs> I mean, you still need to click Cavalier, but it's not like you have another thing you need to afford. And the crossbows and some monks. 21 to 9 KD. ACCM needs to consider his next move here. I think he could easily justify a halb switch here. We'll see if he adds barracks. But also, I, I would like to see him go arbalest as well. The fact that poles don't get that imp armor really can lead to a weak situation for them. Nikov with zero villagers on stone. His other stone is over here. He might take that now. And oh, whoa, 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 whoa. That seems like a very unnecessary move. Yeah, this is Nikov freaking out right now. I think from what we can see, that army's never going to reposition and go over there, but he's worried about it. It's a weird one, though, because I feel like he could have been able to kill this pretty soon. And now you could tell he's like, oh, okay, never mind. I guess I'll just take the stone. Dang, he freaked out. Again, he does have the army to kill this now, but... Oh, the monks! The monks! Hey, guess what tech they have, guys? Don't want to say I've been talking about it all month, but uh, they do have a technology which is keeping them alive in hard times. Those monks can be useful as well. Five conversions when there's 11 knights on the field right now for Nikov could be massive. But man, this imp timing from Nikov is so clutch. He does have Cavalier on the way. Like I said, he's at the limit. But he has two trebs already firing on this castle. And this is why I said don't town center the middle. Town center back here. And then maybe you castle the middle later on. I don't know. I think it, it, there's a lot of reason to justify castling the middle as well, right? Because you're so close to pushing the opponent off. So I, I think it's a preference thing more than anything. My preference is always to play safe. And then I'll just end up dying because of it. So... What do I know? But because ACCM placed another castle, he does not have the stone right now to be able to repair this one. 
And he's going to lose it. Those monks still having an impact, but you'll notice ACCM opens with the halves. I think an important thing right now for Nikov is to realize that ACCM is going to be on the ropes. ACCM is likely going to have to defend the middle. And I'd love to see Nikov loop a couple Cavalier around to the sides right now. I feel like there's opportunity for that. At the same time, he feels like he can maybe push this. And he's just going to use his trebs against the barracks. But I don't know about that, Nikov. That trebuchet, I can't tell if that's what's on fire or the outpost. Well, it's both now. That trebuchet goes down. The poles do get arbalest. They also have their unique unit that can do pretty well against the halves. But, uh... Ah, oh, these monks. Love it. Love it. Helping ACCM hold this middle position for now. Oh, this is what I meant, though. Oh, my God. I got scared. Oh, my God. I got an alert from my other PC. <laughs> I, have to, I have to deal with the, with the recording issue, apparently. But I absolutely love the raids from Nikov. He didn't send everything. Just five Cavalier. And look how exposed that eco is for ACCM. ACCM still trying to push in the middle. And so these Trebs are getting some big shots on the Monks. Nikov's only going for Cavalier. That Halb number has to be higher. We've got 21 Cavalier with 10 more on the way. We've got 21 Halbs. It's like every number counts here. That'll include the Monks as well. The Monks healing, getting conversions could always swing a fight. If Nikov loses his castle, he could lose access to gold. And I understand he's got a little bit more gold income. He's not taking this. He's still not taking this. It's like deja vu from that one series I casted with Slam, I think. The Hobie Desperate guys. He's going to take the fight. He will take the fight because he knows he needs the gold. He's fighting uphill. So there's a hill advantage for ACCM. And he's got the counter in the Halbs. So the Halbs going to be strong enough. And ACCM push this back. The gold that he needs is on the right of your screen here. If he doesn't have this, he can't make any more Cavalier. He cannot tech switch. He's committed. And wow, what a close fight that was. Even the score is just flip-flopping all over the place. I honestly do prefer ACCM's position because ACCM has taken out that castle and it's still fairly easy for him to make Halbs. But Nikov will back up and place this. Again, so important for Nikov to delete these Palisades and take this gold. There's over 2,000 gold there. He doesn't have to rely on only this gold. And if you're wondering why he won't tech switch, it's because when you're on the brink of being killed, you just have to continue making what you've committed towards. Because otherwise, you're going to be tech switching and you're not going to have army. These fights are looking awfully bad, man, for Nikov. As he gets husbandry now. Oh, man. There he is selling some wood for gold. Again, the desperation is real. The gold is sitting right there. What a lovely move from ACCM to continue with the Halb production. Um, or, or I'd just switch into the Halbs. Like, he could have tried to go for Archers. The fact that Poles don't get the final armor upgrade makes Archers still a pretty strong thing. I also like how he's starting to mix in more Archers just in case his opponent goes into the Obuk. Uh, that's going to help there. Also, lovely move from Nikov as he's still being stubborn on this gold. And Nikov has a Bombard Cannon now, and he's going to do his best to just keep this position for as long as possible. And Treb goes down for ACCM, and Nikov's still very much in this, and still, maybe now, he can breathe a little bit, tech switch, and then get some villagers over to this gold. I love how ACCM has full vision on the middle right now, guys. I'm not sure about that monk, but he can just see that Nikov has not been able to get over here. Nikov now going for Blast Furnace, going for Squires, so it's still full melee for him. But the Bombard Cannons seem to be the difference maker right now. The Bombard Cannons can poke away at all of this. Bloomed Archers, not fully upgraded yet. No back away. More Barracks now for ACCM, but this is a crazy game. A minute ago, it looked like Nikov was going to fall off, but he's got full gold saturation here. The Bombard switch has made a big difference. He takes out a Treb. The army counts 50 versus 40. And both players have amazing compositions, honestly. I think maybe a few more Halbs will be needed right now for ACCM. I'm not liking the fact he doesn't have any more in Q, but here he goes into a fight. The Bombard cannons are still melting the plumes. 
And there was a fair amount of Olbuk there in that fight, so those halves didn't fare too well. Nikov doesn't have many upgrades on them, but all he cares about is snowballing the push and the Bombard Cannons! They're whittling down those Plumed Archers. You need castles to produce Plumed Archers. This castle in the middle is one of two of them. Uh-oh, but now the Plumes see the Bombard Cannons. They're angry. How dare you kill my friends. Still don't get any Bombard Cannons. Wow, Nikov's even getting Siege Engineers now. Also catching up on some Eco upgrades, so you know he means business. It's looking... I wanted to say it's looking better and better for Nikov, but it's still such a close game, man. This is incredible. If Nikov didn't have the Bombard Cannons, he's dead. And the way he's controlled them has been so nice. Even getting the repairs in when he needs to. Like right there, boom. Instantly repairing. ACCM. He does have the barracks here, but there's just one too many moments where he doesn't have halves in queue. The plumes are always in queue, though, and the plumes have, have done a fantastic job. This is intense, man. Nikov's economy is growing, though. He's up to 54 farmers now. There's still that conversation of can he take gold long term. I, I, what, what, what's the total kills here? 26 kills from the bomber cannons, which also includes Trebs, and that doesn't... That doesn't uh, take into account how many plumed archers or helps he's weakened. He's killing a lot. Yeah, Nikov stopped at 145 villagers. Which is something that uh, is, is huge here. Uh, he is known for overbooming at times in high pressure scenarios. God, that's so many cavalier. Guys, he's got 12 more cavalier in queue. How do you stop this? The answer is you go halves and you go plumes. But how do you stop this many cavalier? I don't know if the numbers are there right now for ACCM and Nikov. The Bombard Cannons continue to rain down cannonballs on these units. And Nikov, he could push this now. There's not that many halves on the field. There's not many plumes on the field either. And Nikov's got 20 Cavalier in Q. The player who was almost pushed off of gold. The player who forgot about his gold at home. He was working only off of this gold. Only off some of the stone at home. Zero relics. What a push from him, man. And his Cavalier control was insane. His Cavalier, like like anyone else, there's a few stray Cavalier running around and getting caught up in some fights, and he's losing the numbers. Not Nikov, man. He rolls right underneath the TC with his Bombard Cannons. We might even see a follow-up castle for him in the middle. The barracks are going down. ACCM's falling off. The Siege Workshops go up for Nikov. Look at him! He's exploding! And classic, Nikov's going to get the Stone Shaft Mining upgrade when he doesn't have any stone being mined and he doesn't have the Castle Age Wood upgrade. <laughs> what Nikov? I imagine that was a misclick. Here he goes. He's going to take this gold now, so he realizes it after he takes the middle. I just don't think you can stop poles from here. The way to stop Nikov was to keep the middle. It was a 50-50 game there for a while, but Nikov ended up showing what poles are capable of. Like, that has to be a hotkey misclick, right? It's a very interesting technology to research. Uh, Ido, I think Nikov has played incredible here. L the KD tells the whole story, right? He's making units that lack armor. I mean, I know he's been able to make a lot of them. But I think the way Nikov has controlled his army has been impeccable here. And we have to give him credit with constant production. There was never a moment where he wasn't producing... There were a few moments here or there for ACCM where that wasn't the case. These plumed archers are toast. The castles are going to be gone. And full hal will just not work without plume support. Nikov! He's checking his eco upgrades, just making sure that he didn't miss anything. Probably laughing at himself right now. And the GG's called. Nikov continues his amazing form, opens up the series with a victory in his final set. That was a lovely game there. Um... Now, honestly, I want to go back to when Nikov loses his castle. Bear with me. So it was soon after this. Okay, like right here. This is a big fight, right? It's tricky. The Polish Cavalier are, are super cheap. Again, a lot of people feel like they're too cheap, whatever. I wonder if it was just the lack of production in this moment. Because right after this fight... When the dust settles, Nikov's on the back foot, right? I feel like 
if ACCM is able to go for, like, if he had one or two more trebs, if he had 10 to 15 more helps, I think he snowballs this and he wins. And honestly, maybe even right here, he could run in. I forget what he did. Yeah, I think you, you end up moving in here. I don't know. I think it's the lack of halb production. He doesn't have halbs in Q, and he's trying to make the, the switch into plumes. I think if he just goes for the kill there with halberdiers, he could maybe win that game. But it was still super close. Like, at that exact moment we just paused on, it was 142 population for both players. That was a very good game. And here we are, game number two. So, as I just said, this has been one of my uh, favorite maps to cast in this event. Uh, I, I feel like every time we have this game, we're seeing something slightly different, even if the Civ matchup is the same. And we haven't seen the Bohemians versus the Burgundians that frequently. In fact, I thought we'd see it more. And Nikov has gone for the Bohemians in the blue. And then we have the Burgundians for ACCM. You've got the potential to fight for the pressure in the middle. There's five relics in there. Uh, players are pretty close together in this generation as well. So lots of reason to fight for control in the middle. And then you'll have four relics on the outer ring. It's not always two and two. In this case, we've got three in the south, and then we've got one in the north. And there's always some extra stone and gold out there as well. Players can opt to wall up on the back. Uh, many players do. Other players do not. So you do technically have the ability to go for land pressure on either side. I think for Bohemians, they're all about snowballing a push through the middle. That's not a civilization that has a lot of mobility. In fact, it's a very slow civilization. You really shouldn't be able to go in stable units with this civ. So I think if I'm Nikov, I probably am going to opt to wall up and try and pressure the middle with my monks and my pikemen and eventually maybe Halb Hufnice. Uh, but if I'm ACCM with the cheaper stable units on the back of that good economy, I would maybe try and force the issue a bit more on the sides here. But yeah, my... So, uh, you know, we're fortunate. You know, I'm able to work from home. And then my girlfriend's working from him half the time. And so she's in today. And I guess the cats are just used to being able to, you know, have a human around. Uh, and also we spoil them. But it gets really bad on days where she's not home and then I'm streaming. They're outside the door constantly just meowing. Uh, life of a cat, man. I guess they have, they're bored. They have nothing to do. So they're just like, play with me. What is this, by the way? This is super early. So early, in fact, that I think Nikov is going to try and sneak a villager. This is a bit risky. Obviously, this villager is not collecting any resources whatsoever. Uh, could always run into a wolf as well. But Nikov is definitely sneaking a vill here. And with four on wood, I think Nikov's going to break the meta here. And I think we'll try and make a barracks behind ACCM's base or something. Looks like a double Pac-Man. It does kind of look like a double Pac-Man. Ooh, this could look like a bunch of different things. For some reason, I was thinking two pizza slices overlapping each other, but maybe that's just because I'm hungry. I had to be really creative for that. <laughs> and Nikov scouted the wolf, is going to avoid the wolf, and here he goes. Now, important moment in this game. ACCM is most likely going to play standard all game. Probably going fast castle, and behind that, he wants to go for walls. Will he see Nikov scout, and will he see Nikov's villager? He's going to see Nikov scout. And Nikov now sees there's walls. And Nikov thinks there might be a hole here. And there is a hole here. Oh, sneaky, sneaky. Now, I don't think this is actually enough for ACCM to be paranoid. But oftentimes, Nikov would not want to take that engagement at all. Let me see. If ACCM were to lose his villager, it would be awful. Nikov doesn't know about the boar. And I expect a barracks to go up up against the edge of the map. And dang, this becomes very interesting right now. And what I was expecting was for Nikov to simply just go fast castle here. He's not doing that. And he is luring the enemy scout away. So I thought, yeah, maybe if he had saw the boar, he could have like tried to lame the boar or something. But no, I think this is better. But I will say the positioning for the berries and the wood line, all pretty far away from this drush pressure. If ACCM would choose this wood line, it would be a whole lot easier for Nikov. Nikov also can't scout any of that because his scout is weak. But he is going to bring his scout back right now. And as far as ACCM is concerned, he believes he's fully walled, fully protected. There's no need to research the loom. Nikov, if you can kill a villager or two, will be loving life. 
sneak off, right? <laughs> oh, here he comes. Okay. So the thing is, you don't want to make this obvious. He sees that. ACCM has no real reason to think that anything crazy is going to happen here. So well played from Nikov so far. Loom will come in shortly in a normal build for ACCM. Honestly, would have loved to see three militia. And okay, here we go. Here we go. Nikov. He can kill Vils pretty quickly with this. Will he kill villagers? I feel like if he doesn't kill villagers, it might be okay for ACCM. And Nikov's going to wall up the lumber camp. Also, are you sure you want to fight here, ACCM? You don't have Loom! You don't have Loom, bro! Nikov, you should be fighting this nonstop if he doesn't have Loom. What in the world? He queued Loom. I am both surprised that ACCM decided to fight, but also the fact that uh, Nikov didn't continue to engage there. But did kill one villager, and he also walls up the lumber camp. Dang, dude, that's so annoying. And Nikov taking a page out of his, 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 I guess his Argentinian pal Beery's book. Most annoying player in the game right now. Sick stuff from Nikov. What a great start. Now, he is on the way to Feudal Age behind this. And he still has a villager in here. So that's not going to be the end of it for him. Nikov could win this game very quickly. What a strategy. We did see Viper go for a sneak before against Jordan. It didn't lead to him winning the game. But this is a one-of-a-kind strategy. And it has ruined the Fast Castle build for ACCM. And it's put him in a position where he's actually going to go man-at-arms. That Nikov's villager should still be in a really nice position to make an archer range. He's made another militia. Dang, this build is so sick. Wow, man. Also, the eco behind this is perfect. He's able to get his wood upgrade. He's able to get man-at-arms. The range timing's perfect. I would say maybe just wall in your vill because we might see a little bit of it. Yeah, ACCM might try and force the fight before man-at-arms. Okay, so there you go. Now Man at Arms is in. Still a fight ACCM might choose to take, but it won't be great for him. So now he backs away, and ACCM was never expecting this, man. With the idle time of traveling across the map, do you think that was enough damage? I, I definitely do. Because also, you can do anything you want at home, and that's not the case for ACCM. So it's not even just the idle time and the kills on paper. It's also how the game flow goes, right? Now, what is ACCM going to do? With his man at arms or in his archers. He's gonna be stuck. Like Nikov could always just wall it up. He has to delete his own walls to get out too. I mean, I think ACCM is in this game, especially since he's Burgundians. And that's probably part of why Nikov wanted to pressure, because he knows Burgundians can get those eco upgrades on the cheap and one age ahead of time. But to force that tower there and then also to shift focus on this side is just so well played for Nikov. Very impressed with him. And now, just in case there's a counterattack, he's going to wall himself up. This might even be a little too safe, to be honest with you. But, oh, oh, it's because the man-at-arms are coming this way. See what I mean? Yeah, he didn't see the man-at-arms. And here comes ACCM to find out if there's a hole. Wow, Nikov! I wasn't kidding when I said that he's playing his best Age of Empires probably ever. He's looking so good, man. Also, never one to really come out with out-of-the-box strategies, so well played to him here. And now this whole journey is going to be a waste. He even canceled the man in arm upgrade once he saw the wall. Now, I guess Nikov would need an archer range at home to defend from this, so this could still be annoying for a while. But I feel like Nikov would be very happy with how much damage he's been able to do here. ACCM has to be careful. He doesn't have fletching yet. And while he continues to place houses like this, they're melting very quickly. And a lot of these villagers made the previous houses, so they got hit. ACCM just needs army to defend from this because the house strategy is just not going to work. I'm sure, he's Burgundians and he has the wood upgrade, but things cannot be very efficient for him right now. Nikov is just going to make some houses there. Great job from Nikov. He sees the archers. He's firing on the archers all the time. He knows how this is going to go. Great job from ACCM. He still doesn't let the army in. It is four archers, four range units versus three or something like that. And Nikov's just all over the guy. 3-0 KD. He hasn't lost a single unit this game. Includes his scout, his villager, his man-at-arms. 
He's even making a forward market right now. <laughs> oh, God. This is domination. Normally, I want close games, but if the games end up being like this, this is incredible. This is really exciting stuff. Also, that archer almost ran into the TC there. He still hasn't lost a unit. Still at this point. Hasn't lost a scout. Pulled the scout back because it was weak. Still house walling over here, so he's fine. I think ACCM's dead. Honestly, how does ACCM bring it back? Like, he needs skirms. And he doesn't have as many as he'll need. And then, as his six unit goes down, if Nikov goes cast leech, what does he do? This is amazing. I think Nikov will just buy some food. He'll use this villager to make a siege workshop in the next stage. And he'll just dominate an early cast leech. A lot of your farming ecos behind this. These villagers here went for a trap. Nikov pulled back. Like, Nikov is moving twice as fast right now. He's got so much control. Also, I'm surprised ACCM isn't dead yet. But talk about damage control. Look how many weak villagers are over here. <laughs> like, he's a cool summer's breeze away from losing his whole economy. Still forced to make skirmishers nonstop. Still doesn't quite have the numbers. Nikov continues to chew him up. Nikov continues to close in on Castle Age. Let's actually look at the HP. I mean, that's insane. Look at all their HP bars. This villager's weak as well. Everywhere you look, there's weak villagers. So I would say the way to bail yourself out here if you're ACCM is by using the market. He has his market now. And also, now that you've got, uh, what's he have? Three or four skirms? That's not too bad against eight archers. So you move out, and you do your very best to chew up the archer numbers before they're upgraded. If you're Nikov, you might want to consider adding a stable in an Arabia game. I'm not sure about adding a stable. Oh, there's a stable. Okay, I was going to say, I'm not sure if that's really the play uh, on this map because you can't actually use your stable units as effectively because you're running in towards walls. He's actually adding the range on the front and then he's adding the stable at home. Maybe he's going to add scouts for the middle so he can get the relics or something. I don't know. I do feel like he could simply just focus on going for the kill, but I guess when he has the control of the corner... He doesn't want his opponent to be able to get away with taking the middle. But I can understand adding a knight or two there. That villager's still alive. Uh, I don't know if you guys have named him yet, but we're going to call him... Uh, Jimopolis, that's his name. He's, uh, he's a Greek villager. I think that sounds like a, a gr Greek name, kind of, sort of. <laughs> don't they have a lot of the, like, Opolis at the end of their names? I don't know, dude. I'm an ignorant streamer. Tons of eco upgrades coming in for ACCM, and he's still hunting for these archers. And Nikov's micro continues to be insane. Somehow, the KD is evened out a little bit. And ACCM is going to want to drop at Castle. Nikov is going to want to get Crossbow and Bod Canero so he can push down these skirmishers. There's the monastery for him. So he definitely wants the relics in the middle. And now ACCM is placing a tower. Again, great damage control from ACCM. Because this now becomes a problem for his skirmishers. So he needs to have the tower up. And now you've got tower fire. You also have a few skirmishers. You could chew this up. We might see Nikov start to focus on the rest of the map now. Because this is not exactly what he would have wanted with this investment. Also, getting chemistry right away. That shows me he really wanted to go all in here. We'll see though. He does clear up the skirms in the end. Also, this villager is being attacked by Militia. Something that Nikov most likely won't notice, but if he could save Jim, I'd be so happy. Uh, uh, save him! He's dead. I'll give you points for trying. Isn't there... You know what I'm talking about. I was not close, but close at the same time. I'll give you points for trying. <laughs> I'll take the points. Uh. <laughs> Chemistry... On crossbows, very strong. Siege, knights, everything pretty much dies to the crossbows with good micro. But Jim is dead. And somehow Nikov is not dead. Nikov has a villager lead. All right, not Nikov. Sorry, I meant to say somehow ACCM's not dead. He has a villager lead. He only lost one villager that entire sequence. That's ridiculous play from him. Players are so good at playing defensive these days. 
I do have to question the decision from Nikov to prioritize chemistry so early. I don't know. It's a lot. It takes a long time to research. Maybe he didn't expect ACCM's Castle Age to be so good. He's making hand cannons. Let's go. Hand cannons. And I'm sure he sees the castle now and he's not pleased. Also, the militia are, are out here killing a monk to stop the relics from being brought in. Nikov's already on one. That will annoy Nikov. Remember, he did add one scalp. Just felt like he tried to do a lot, right? And now he's just going to send some knights to the middle. Just sucks to make all this army and not really be able to do anything with it. You do keep control of this region. And it forces ACCM more towards the middle. But ACCM is going to send some of his units towards the middle right now. And ACCM isn't really troubled by this army at the moment. He changed his name to Jim. Well, they call him Jim for short. Obviously. Scout against the militia. But this is where it gets important to get conversions if you're Nikov. I'll say only because I feel like it could have been more. He only has two relics. And look at that micro from ACCM. Pulled that one away. One shots the monk there. How in the world is ACCM still alive in this game? Also, his eco upgrades are insane. He's got the Castle Age wood and farm upgrade. Also has wheelbarrow. Also has a vill lead. Ridiculous play from him. A lot of this obviously comes down to the Burgundians. And maybe that came into Nikov's mind. He's just like, I really want to get a lead early against this Burgundian eco. Because otherwise I'm in trouble. Also, I wonder, did ACCM scout any of these relics down here? Okay, not really. Nikov is at a monastery to grab these relics. I hope he at least takes them home, though. I think dropping them off in this monastery is a mistake. That's most likely what it will do, but... God, he's got such a big force here. Now, if he can hold the middle, as he will use knights to kill a monk, and he might even be able to kill another one... He doesn't actually see it. And neither does ACCM. This is weird. Uh, now he sees it. Well, that's bad. Um, but yeah, like, I guess as he dives the tower and kills one or two villagers, if he's able to hold the middle with something else, then this is obviously very good. I think that's the idea right now. Also, he shredded that tower. Dang. And Cannon's having 17 attack in Castle Age is no joke, man. We see fervor for Nikov, so his monks and villagers are faster with his sieve. He will lose these two knights, but he will get relic number four from the middle. Uh, I guess that's number three from the middle. Nikov, please ma just make another monk and send these relics home. I know it seems ridiculous. Uh, gets the... Hello? Oh, that was weird. I thought he was going to get the conversion there. Ooh, big fight here. This is probably where both players are focusing... And surprise, surprise, the Coustier mop up everything. I think that's been the big thing. I, I mentioned how Nikov's been talking a lot about Burgundians. That's the big thing, is their eco's too good, and their unit's insane with that early attack. What do they do, like 30-plus attack with their first, first hit? There's a castle for ACCM, and he might apply pressure here. He knows Nikov doesn't have a lot of army at home. Now Nikov's starting to stonewall up. He did put two relics here. There's a third one here. He has five in total. But the economy is not looking quite as good as it is for his opponent right now. Got hand cannons as well. A 40 HP unit. They pretty much get one-shotted by the unit that ACCM's making. Slowly, ACCM will be able to expand to the back area of his base. He will ram down all these houses, which might house sneak up, but we'll start with the ranges first. And this wall off gets denied. Oh, yeah, you're right. It should say Group D here. I'm very sorry on that. Completely forgot. So, the the win condition for Bohemians in this Civ matchup is Halb. Oh, he could lose the castle. <gasps> okay, Halb, Hufnice, and maybe some monks mixed in. What Nikov has gone for was maybe trying to assist him in getting there. But it has actually turned it into a game where ACCM is able to use his mobility a little bit more. And this castle may be denied here. Also, we have petards for ACCM, which I think he was originally going to use against the walls. But now he's using it against the castle, which is crazy. 
And Nikov's losing so many vills. Also, he's getting attacked over here. Look at the vill difference. This castle will go up, but it'll be on fire, guys. 66 villagers for Nikov as he's on his way to Imp. It's 97 villagers for ACCM. Also, there's not a lot to stop ACCM from just ramming this down. Like, how do you kill these units? I have an answer for you. You don't. You don't kill these units here. With this economy, in this situation, you don't really have much. And so that castle is just going to be a goner. Also, one-fourth of his eco is now inside that castle. Murder holes! He's getting murder holes! It's a good tech. Definitely one that he needs here. It's kind of funny how there's also a monk underneath the castle fire just healing up his men. But, uh, yeah. This is, uh... He's going to be an imp without a castle. That's the issue here. And ACCM knows he can just run around. No problem. He can loop over here if he needs to. Actually, he might he might not be able to ram this down. Hmm. Actually, murder holes. Wait a second. Murder holes coming in clutch. Nikov might be able to make another castle. Nikov could go bomb or cannons. Maybe there's still a chance here. Chemistry... Combined with the hand cannon should mean the rams won't be enough. Okay. Okay. Uh, love how this has all been cleared up slowly. Nikov's still so far behind economically. It's so crazy. Castle's still a bit of an issue. I love how ACCM had the idea to ram it, though. I mean, it still forced a lot of reactions from Nikov. And I think with the amount of castles he has, he could just continue to make the units he's making. Combine it with a few skirmishers and feel okay. And Ram goes down as we expected. Nikov needs to push these castles back now. His hand cannons can get stronger if he gets armor upgrades. But yep, there's the bombard cannon. Rewalling this is very nice. Also still has the relics here, which is awesome. Uh, this is something he's been trying to convert for a bit. And he does get the conversion there. I don't think he should produce anything here. At this point, that's that's all finished. It's all about pushing the middle. A creative start from Nikov, an impressive hold from ACCM. He could have lost eight villagers to that attack. Instead, he lost one. And now we have Bod Canera for ACCM, and he's going to mix in elite skirms. The difference being is that his economy allows him to go for multiple units at once. But at the same time, I mean, Nikov, it's not like he doesn't have resources. He just doesn't seem to have a ton of wood right now, and I wonder why that is. Alp, hand cannon. Also, he's hiding how many hand cannons he has. This castle could go down for ACCM. This will lead to ACCM getting pop capped. There's still a lot of upgrades that ACCM doesn't have. And it seemed to me like he really needed to keep the castles producing as well as the ranges producing. He loses this castle, he'll most likely lose this castle, and ACCM falling off a little bit. Pikeman on the way for Nikov. Pikeman, hand cannon, bombard cannon is exactly what we talk about when we're talking about the Bohemians at this stage. Also, love the rewall from Nikov. I'm not sure if he'll complete it. I'll keep an eye on that, though. Also, love how the scout is attacking over here as well. He just camped that on the gold. And he's even walling up this side. This is great. He can focus fully on the middle now. I don't mind crop rotation. It's really cheap, right? And this game might go on for a long time. I don't mind that. As long as you're doing everything else. And he is doing his best. I know crop rotation normally isn't worth it unless the game goes on for a long time. But yeah, a lot of these farms are about to reseed. And the game might go on for a long time. That scouts the MVP right now. What a crazy death ball from Nikov. How much more army can he make as well? He's got more monks in the mix. He's getting block printing. He sees more castles. I, what a great game. What a great game. It looked like ACCM was dead, and then I thought Nikov was dead, and now the faster imp has made such a big difference for him. Also getting great conversions there. He has the perfect army composition. The only thing is just a few armor upgrades would make me very happy. Blacksmith upgrades in general are really lacking for Nikov at the moment. He will not be able to get the Hufnitsa upgrade, most likely. And here he goes. He goes in for the fight. ACCM patrols in. 
He does 40 damage a hit. <laughs> Mark very close to it with his first hit. And then the Skirms are here backing it up. The Bomber Cannons, they all survive, though. I guess not all of them. Three out of the four survive. Treb also still up for ACCM, though. And there's not a lot of army here for Nikov. Now the uh, lack of eco is, is really obvious for me. Nikov is making primarily halbs. He will snipe another trebuchet, though. He backs away with this. He's at 120 pop, though. It's not looking good. Snipe another trebuchet, though. And, oh, man, if only he had ballistics here. I might still be able to keep his stuff alive, but, oh, his castle could go down. If his castle down, if his castle is down, excuse me, his hand cannons are exposed. His bombard cannons were taken out. And there's the GG. Wow, what a game. What a hold from ACCM. That was insane. Can we go back to like the 17 minute mark and look at the HP on these villagers? Look at this. The amount of houses he had to make, the amount of villagers he had to pull away, the fact that he still had 21 seconds of TC idle time throughout all this and had his eco upgrades. Nikov played Feudal Age perfectly, man. Like, Nikov against most players would win this game and it wouldn't even be close but accm brought it back he was eventually able to deal with the crossbows he focused on the economy and focused on the middle finishes off the game that was an incredible win for accm and a big talking point in the group as well because now he goes up to six total wins remember there's one more game in this series and then accm will have one more set to play against tato so felt like accm needed to get a win on the board in this series because Tats was not going to be any easier. And he just got it there. Um, honestly, I can't be too critical of how Nikov played it after ACCM's amazing defense. Because, quite honestly, he did enough to win the game. And it just didn't work out. And then I think when he had to do too much. Like, you've got this army. And you, you invested into it. But then you realize it's not winning you the game. So you have to boom. Boom. But you didn't invest into the boom as much. And then you're like, oh, I also got to get the relics. Oh, I also got to make a stable. Like, he had to do so many different things. Whereas for ACCM, he was always going to have the better economy sieve. And all ACCM did was eco and coustier. And obviously, like, some monks here or there. But it felt like ACCM's job was a lot easier from that stage. Whereas Nikov had to control so many different things. Yeah, the fact ACCM won that game is unbelievable. That's one of the most impressive wins. And most impressive holds from the entire tournament so far. Uh, more wood, more food, more stone. Incredible series. All right, game number three. Big one for both players. Obviously, $40 per win. Nikov now with nine total wins. Remember, this is his last game in the group stage. If he could get to 10, he would be loving life. He would then be, I think, tied with MBL. MBL has one round left to play against Dogao. As it stands, Nikov and MBL are at the top of the group, though. ACCM very much in the middle of the pack. But he's at six wins, which is solid. And he will have one more series left to play against Tato. And feels like that series up against Tato is going to be a massive one. Because I, I don't know exactly how it's going to go. But I know I'm paying attention to Tato's sets. Uh, well, he's got one more set. And then also Dogal, because Dogal has to play Bad Boy yet. Bad Boy uh, had a... Keyboard issue after Bad Boy was sick for a week, so Bad Boy's had a rough time. Uh, and then Dogao also has to play MBL yet. Wait, did I say did I say ACCM has to play MBL? I said something about MBL. I, I I must have I think I just said that MBL had one more set remaining. Anyways, Nikov's got Hindustanis, ACCM's got Chinese. Really clean start here for ACCM. Uh, the max idle TC time you're looking for is about 25 to 30 seconds with a Chinese start in Arabia. There's no avoiding it. You start with zero food, so you will have some idle TC. The maps look pretty even. Uh, I would say it's a lot easier to play from Nikov's base, most likely. And I know that his gold's more forward, but I think it's a lot easier with the positioning of the wood lines to figure out how to wall. For ACCM, he just has to work a little bit harder here but does have some nice back golds and back stones. Actually, all of his golds are kind of on the back. Uh, it's, it's a great Civ matchup here, too. I feel like Chinese are better overall. I think I would prefer the Chinese over the Hindustanis, despite all the bonuses the Hindustanis have. But uh, it's very close right now. I think Hindustanis, with their cheaper villagers and all the options they have, they can pretty much counter anything. 
I think, as always, it'll come down to how much damage the Chinese take early. If the Hindustanis are not able to apply pressure, maybe very similar to the previous game where Nikov was out and aggressive. Um, if ACCM is able to hold, then I like his position a little bit more. Um, the one game I've been waiting for, Jordan versus Miguel, is the only game not scheduled on the Equipedia. Any clue what's going on with that? Well, it was going to happen tomorrow, but apparently last night Miguel's grandmother passed away, and he offered Jordan an admin win because he didn't he can't play right now because he's he's mourning, and Jordan said, to his credit, and we said the same thing. Uh, yeah, we're not letting that happen. We're going to get these games done. So right now, we are delaying the games, and we're not sure exactly when we're going to have them played, but we'll let you know when we know. Hopefully for Miguel, I sent him a text this morning. Uh, hopefully everything will end up being all right. I've been there, and uh, hopefully he'll be in a good mental state when that very important series happens. So that'll be the final group stage set. I'm thinking right now it'll maybe be Monday, but we're going to give them uh, give them a couple days. We won't have that tomorrow, unfortunately. All right, some, some wall off from Nikov. I'm um, thinking he might open scouts here, uh, the way he's walling up. It's interesting to see so many walls this early with you're up against the Chinese. Normally, it's the Chinese that are walling, and then the other players being aggressive against the Chinese. But it is a very important game, and these guys have a lot of respect for each other. And it is pretty easy to wall this map, so we're going to see the walls. But I'm not sure if I like the walls from the player who wants to damage the Chinese. We'll see. Unless Nikov wants to go fast castle. Wait a second. Nikov did try that against MBL in their first series. I think that was week one. He's making more villagers. He does have this gold. Um... I mean, it's either a very late archer play or it's fast castle. This is crazy. I don't think we're going to see the same for ACCM. I think ACCM is just expecting some type of pressure. So he had to work hard to wall off his sides. He will wall off the sides and probably build up towards the front here. I honestly kind of like it. I like Nikov's strategy because your villagers are cheap, which allows you to pull this off a bit easier. And ACCM is usually not going to scout you until much later. And now ACCM, he can't doesn't know you have a gold back there. Fast castle into what is the question? You can tell ACCM's debating on running in there with his scout. He's like, wait, what? What in the world? So a weakness of the Chinese is the fact that because they start with zero food, they normally stay at home longer, and they normally push their deer. And they also play very safe with the walls so they can keep their vill, uh, their vill lead, right? And so full walling and getting the walls down before he sends the scout forward is actually a fantastic move. Nikov's going fast castle. Now the Hindustanis can play into crossbow just fine in castle age? I, I don't know, man. Is it possibly Ghulams? I think the correct play, if you're in ACCM's position... Ooh... Okay, I was going to say the correct play is to just get your eco upgrades and try and go up, but he's going to run forward. He's changing his strategy. And this is going to be a tower rush. But guys, he hasn't seen a lot. He doesn't know where the wood line is for Nikov. He doesn't know where the berries are. He knows where the gold is, but he, Nikov wouldn't go fast castle without gold. If he would have actually attacked the wall there, I think he would have actually seen the gold. There's a range. Oh, excuse me. I didn't see he had a barrack somewhere. Okay, there we go. So he's going to go archers with a tower to break through. So now the double wall for Nikov's actually looking really smart there. It's just a couple palisades, so I, I don't hate it. Seems to know where he's most vulnerable. You think he'll regret walling out the gold? Well, uh, in the long term, if he doesn't push back this tower, certainly, right? But the thing about gold is you have 800 gold a tile. And that's going to last you for a long time. And he's going to go to stone. Nikov's going to try fast castle Ghulam. What? So for the record, fast castling on this type of map isn't the craziest thing ever. But fast castling into a melee unit. I mean, I can't really think of another example where high level players do that. Can anyone else? There's no fast castle samurai. That's not a thing. 
There's no fast castle Wode Raider. There's no fast castle Teutonic Knight. There's no fast castle. I mean, I'm going down the list in my mind. Fast castle into plumed archers or rats and archers or any ranged unit. That's normally a thing. But this is completely different. At a high level, you wouldn't see Fast Castle Husk Girls either. But that was probably the, the best guess that you guys have given me. Fast Castle Coustier. Okay, that's an example. So, the Coustier as well. So, I guess my point is, Nikov has a lot of faith in this Gulam. And we've had many very long conversations about how the Hindustanis have ridiculous bonuses. And they can virtually do everything. And the Gulam is just added to that list. Nikov has defended himself. ACCM was late with the scouting, and ACCM has not really been able to do anything. This tower is just lonely tower with archers inside. And here he, here he goes. And okay, now he sees these villagers. And Nikov says, oh, that's cute. I'm just going to take this woodline then. Honestly, I think it's really difficult. But I think the correct play, if you know your opponent's going fast castle... Might be to just get your eco upgrades and wall. I think if you get your eco upgrades and you go into stone walls, you can have like a 17, 30, 18 minute castle age. When you get there, you'll have a lot of resources. I, I understand trying to pressure him as well, though. So it's a really, really tricky subject. So the Gulam is an anti-archer unit. Has a bonus against eagles, which isn't really relevant here. But it's very cheap and very easy to make. And many people feel like it's OP right now. So I think that's what we'll see. But Nikov's kind of at the limit here. <laughs> he's got one farm. He's got a little bit on berries for food income. He's definitely taking some risks to be able to get this castle up. And I do like this from ACCM. He's going to shoot down Nikov's tower. And Archer's coming over. Villager's still running around. Also, Eco looking pretty good for ACCM. I'm never too happy if the Chinese player doesn't have horse color because that upgrade's so cheap for them. And you do get more food on your farms with Chinese, but I understand it because he came forward and his Eco was a bit more fragile at that time. And here you go. You'll be able to defend from this if you're Nikov. ACCM placing another tower, though, where he can send his new archers into the tower. That's really unique. And now Nikov needs to make a decision on where he places his castle. I would say place it right here. Because you just wanted to shoot these towers down and then you get your gold back. That's perfect. And yeah, that should take care of all that. You might actually need to wall this if you're worried about the losing this position. But it's so greedy from Nikov. Or spearmen. He's adding spearmen. So I guess he wasn't expecting the Gulam. He added a lot of spearmen. And yeah, great point. The Gulam wouldn't be near as terrifying if the civilization didn't have camels that attack faster. <laughs> so like, you can't make knights against Gulam because they can just go camels then. The Civ counter is literally everything. It has one of the best economies in the game. Don't even get me started again. But same words could be applied to Chinese, right? The same exact words could be applied to the Chinese, just obviously in different ways. This tower goes up. Some archers are left inside. I, I honestly, I really like how ACCM has played this. I'm concerned for him with all these villagers and archers out that this, there could be a problem. But he will be up to Castle Age. He will be walled. He has done a lot more than Nika was probably expecting. He denied this wood line. He could deny this wood line as well. Sick job from ACCM. Nikov has some decisions to make on how he plays this now. Obviously, Nikov's got no control over the game. He gave up full map control for this. Here he goes with the Gulam. This reminds me... I, I'm so glad that towers are somewhat back right now. Because I find that tower games are fantastic in terms of position. And also, I'm really glad that uh, we incorporated a few more hills on this map. At least, like, the bigger hills. Again, important positions on hills is such an interesting thing with Age of Empires 2. This was brilliant, man. He's he's going to hold this wood line down and the gold for the long run. And then he's also protected at home. Here he goes. He's got a stable here, ACCM, so he'll probably add some knights. 
still know that Nikov is going to be going for Gulam. I think the concern is that the Gulams will break through Palisades really quickly. So you need to make sure you have walls down everywhere. Uh, here he goes. He's going to go for the house. And you need another house here, ACCM. ACCM. ACC. Oh my god. I'm going to scream. No. Dude. Now, is there a hole there? I hope not. But I would pull that other villager as well. This is... You've got a bit until you can make knights. He probably was, was calm. But uh, I was not. <laughs> uh, adds a stone wall there. I guess there was a hole and he found it. So there we go. Now he can make knights. Okay, so now that he will have a few knights, I think he'll be okay. Nikov is adding the second town center. And you can see he thought about a stable. And instead, he's just going to opt for monks right now. Does need to be careful over here. So far, the Eco KD is 3-0. So I guess ACCM lost those villagers. They were on that stone. Nikov just killed them. It's not just the Gulam being cheap, but it's the fact they have 8 base attack and 65 HP. And your civilization has cheaper villagers. So you're able to make a lot of these things. And I don't think this is enough knights to take a cost-effective engagement. Now, they don't have a lot of melee armor, but look at that from Nikov. Pulls the weak one back. Nikov now has the villager lead over the Chinese, which is not something you can say every day. New TC, though, for ACCM, so he'll be right on top of it. Still feel like these towers are going to be important as the game goes on. There are the knights for ACCM. However, there will be a monk that could come back and get conversions here. And there it is. I think you just have to kill the monk. You're probably losing a knight there regardless. So kill the monk. Good stuff. He backs away. And then we see TC number three for Nikov. Hey, T90. Hey, chat. Nice to see TTL again. Uh, did everybody already blank, blank grievances about nerfing new civs? Uh, I'm not sure what you're talking about, but glad you could make it back. Us talk about new civs? No. We don't do that here. Did they, did they announce something that they're making changes? Is that what you're talking about? Or... Did you just want to talk about the new civs a bit? <laughs> yeah, I agree. I think Bodkin Arrow can really help with the towers, but I don't think it's worth it to research at this stage. I think you'd really need to get the Vil production and the Knight production out. Now, I do like the idea of Light Kev. Again, he needs more food income. He, I mean, he has the farms, but it'll just take a second for that food income to come in. Honestly, missing Wheelbarrow right now is kind of the biggest reason why he doesn't have as much food. Nikov doesn't have that either, of course. Both players will need that shortly. Love Nikov's boom. Uh, imagine if Bodkin was in now. Actually, you could bring the archers out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bring the archers out. That's really smart thinking. Bring the archers. Now you're starting to weaken the villagers. And now Nikov needs to run away. He thought he could just bring a monk over and be okay. But again, the damage control from these two has been incredible this series. Yep, there you go. The archers are going to have to pull back a little bit. Villager's running away. Monk is, is actually looping around. Because he wanted to still go get the knight. There, same thing. You have to be careful. He might just convert an archer. Heavy pressure here, though. The camels that attack 20% faster. The gulams. They are here, and they are going to melt this stable. By the way, stable units from Hindustanis. Melt buildings. Having a few stable units in there will help. The light cap pops out. Smart thinking. The knights have to go home now, I think. That monk might die. But the light cap is just going for more monks at the moment. Because he knows, Nikov knows that there's going to be an engagement here shortly. And ACCM's waiting to take it. Okay. Still a lot of archers. I guess they were all pulled out of the towers now. It's probably worth it. 63 villagers for 73. We had a straight, fast, castle, unique unit play from Nikov, which is so freaking cool, man. I know everyone loves when Arabia always plays out in the Dark Age, Feudal Age, but I like the potential for fast castle. Also love how Nikov has balanced this. His eco upgrades were perfectly timed. He's getting relics. He also has enough stone for the next castle. Remember his base. This is going to be the question mark. So he could always place a castle in that area. Right now, he seems to be doing a lot of searching to find out where ACCM has sent that army. And he's going to take out these towers now, so that won't be an issue. 
And now ACCM is going to bring his army forward. Feels like both players are waiting for a main engagement in the middle right now. 72 eco versus 83. We have wheelbarrow on the way for both players. Pretty much at the same time here. What do you make if you're ACCM? I, I think what he's making is perfect. I think Knight, Light Cav, your own camels. I think that's the only thing you can really do. I think the Ulam is not going to be that effective against Knights. And the archers show up and kill a monk. And where are Nikov's camels? Camel's the most important thing for Nikov, not the Gulam. And just when we thought Nikov was going to be in a great position to drop a castle at home, he do hasn't done that. He doesn't have anything here right now. And the idle time's catching up with him as he's just making more and more camels. What a great fight for ACCM. Probably needs to back away now. And he's going to mix in his own camels knowing that that's what ACCM will focus on. But certainly enough control for ACCM where Nikov can't go forward and drop a castle now. And this could lead to a forward castle from ACCM, possibly. Like, a castle here would be potentially game-ending. Also, I love the micro from the archers. Are you kidding me? Oh, my goodness. These archers have gotten value here. I guess they'll kind of do a bit of damage as well against the camels, though it's not that, not that simple. So, Nikov, he thinks he might have to worry about the crossbow upgrade coming in for ACCM. But actually, what it's going to be is it's going to be pikemen. So, the pikemen upgrade's on the way. We don't have many units out yet. That'll take some time. Nikov's still waiting. He wants a big fight, and then he wants to drop the castle. He could place the castle now if he didn't feel like he could win the fight. But he's getting upgrades. He's massing monks ready for conversions. And he's spamming more camels. He's got 11 camels with three more on the way. And oh my god, this is going to be sick, man. This is going to be so sick. Here comes ACCM. Are you kidding? Nikov, drop one right next to it, please. Make it a party. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Honestly, I think if you're ACCM, you might need to back yours up a little bit. Maybe not. But like when you see this, I think you do need to bail because at least Nikov has a TC to protect himself. And oh god. I don't know guys. The pikes arrived a little late to this party. I'll keep an eye on the castles for you. 75%, 50% here. There's a lot more blue than red. And that castle's gonna be denied. And oh, you could understand the idea for ACCM. But Nikov got his production rolling at just the right time. And him baiting ACCM, him waiting to place his own castle, was so smart. And honestly, if I see pikemen, I just start to make gulams again. He's now got two castles to do that. And that might be the 2-1 right there. I don't see how you stop this now. You can't make pikemen against the camels. You can't make knights against the gulams. Gulam camels should destroy everything that can be made right now by ACCM. You have the best camel civilization, and you have one of the best anti-archer civilizations right here. It's the same sieve. Same They're insane. But I, again, taking it back to how Nikov played it, he knew he needed the production. He had a thousand stone in the bank and he was waiting for the proper time. That was so sick. Also, these stables are not going to stick around for much longer. And that monk will survive. Nikov will get his own conversions, though. ACCM dropping a castle at home. Nikov's going to drop a castle forward. Big moment. The camels stay on the buildings, though. The gulams go into the fight. The gulams should wreck the pikemen. And ACCM, I think he's done here. Uh, Nikov has been so dominant throughout T T90 Titans League so far. This will be his final round again. Most likely will be second place. We do have to see exactly how things pan out. But it seems like he's going to be a firm second in this group. Certainly, I mean, he's safe, right? There's no risk of relegation. I think at worst he's going to be third if Kato gets a ton of wins, Dogal gets a ton of wins. Does depend a little bit on how MBL plays as well, obviously. But yeah, Nikov's on the way to him. And Nikov will drop a castle here where he can treb this down and ACCM's just trying to survive. Wow, that was crazy. That one went from zero to a hundred really fast. An underrated aspect of the Hindustanis, and I talked about it a lot when they were Indians, is how cheap their villagers are. And you're able to 
go to imp a bit faster because you're not spending as much when you're booming to the same amount of villagers. Uh, and then that also means you're floating resources for army, you're floating resources for upgrades. We know they've got options, man. Flamin says there should be an admin ban for OP civs. Okay, so you want me to ban Chinese and Hindustanis? <laughs> I, I think you could make arguments that both civs are insane. I understand that maybe Gurjaras and, and Hindustanis are on another level right now. But the reality is, ACCM, he had opportunities to pick these civs. He picked the Chinese, I think, as his first pick. He also could have gone for global bans. There's only one, of course. I think Nikov just showed how to play this his map and his civ, this civ matchup to perfection. Um, I mean, think of everything Nikov's done. Defended from a tower and archer rush. Was faster with the boom. Played into Gulam. Played into camels at the perfect time. Had monks at the perfect time and has three relics. Defended with the castle drop and had an amazing fight. He's got eco upgrades up the wazoo. He's got upgrades on all of his military. More stuff coming in. Perfect position here. I mean, this is as near flawless as it gets for Nikov. That's before you even talk about the scouting. He's got extra golds over here. He sees the extra stone over here. He's, he's, he's placing outposts to see the north. Only thing he didn't check was this corner. Nikov's been a beast, man. Nikov's been a beast. So for ACCM, it was a great series. I mean, game number two, what ACCM was able to accomplish was mind-blowing to me. He's had one too many of these sets where he is getting one win right now. Um, he's still okay, as far as we know, but he has six points going into his final round, which will be versus Tato tomorrow, okay? Tato has seven wins. ACCM now has six wins. We also have a weird situation where Dogal has to play MBL and Bad Boy. And Dogal's, I think, at three wins. So Dogal could end up getting to nine, in theory. Tato could end up getting to ten, in theory. And ACCM could end up getting to nine, in theory. And then you have Bad Boy, who's forever relegated regardless. He only has that one more set against Dogal. So, it's close, man. It's very close. ACCM and Dogal are the two players that I'm looking at uh, as the players that might potentially join Bad Boy in getting relegated and might be pushed into that fifth position. But we could be saying similar things even about Tato in this group. Really, only the top two are safe. And there's a lot to play. Or a lot to play for. Um, I feel like both of these players are very well prepared for this series, you know? Like, from game one to game two to game three... I never had a big question over their strategy. Uh, their execution level was really high as well. I, we talked about Group D as the group of death for a reason. Man, they've looked really smooth.